Hey everyone, I'm going to be putting together a video on the Citation Encore versus the Citation Ultra, comparing them side by side. There's a lot of differences to cover, so I'm going to be moving fast and I'm going to be uh, showing everything side by side in roughly the same order that I would be pre-flighting an airplane in uh, to talk about some of the systems and differences that you'll run into if you get a chance to fly the Ultra and the Encore at the same time. Here's the aft J box. That's the aft junction box for a bunch of electrical connections on a Citation Encore. Notice how the circuit breakers face aft, face real, rearward um, towards the pilot as we're looking in to inspect them. And it makes it easy to see if any circuit breakers have popped. Here's the aft J box in an Ultra. Notice how the circuit breakers all face outward towards the walls of the fuselage as well as down towards the floor. So they're actually very difficult to see when inspecting on the pre-flight inspection. The Encore is slightly more accessible for the inspecting the hydraulic reservoir as well. Uh, in the Ultra, you have a little slot to inspect the reservoir through, whereas here in an Encore, we can just look up in a, in a fairly wide opening aft of the fire bottles and forward of the um, baggage bulkhead. To inspect the hydraulic reservoir in an Ultra, we have a slot cut in the sheet metal uh, lined with the uh, rearmost, the aftmost uh, fire bottle. We can see the slot right up here. That's what we're looking for. And it's uh, pretty tough to see the reservoir through there. But uh, if, you, if you look perfectly in line and shine a light straight through there, uh, you should be able to read how much fluid is in the reservoir. Moving into the cockpit of the Encore, you'll find that the controls here in the center of the center pedestal are different than an Encore. The air conditioning is all the same switchology as an Ultra, but it's integrated into the panel here rather than a separate control panel off on the co-pilot side. Also notice the pressurization source selector. There's no ground position on the pressurization source. Because the engines are bigger and they provide more bleed air, there's no need for the ground valve in an Encore. Also, the digital pressurization controller is located here as opposed to the analog pressurization controller in a, in a Citation Ultra. Here's the center pedestal in an Ultra. Notice that the air conditioning is not part of the center pedestal. The air conditioning is the same controls and the same switches, but it has its own panel over on the co-pilot side here by the co-pilot's right knee. And uh, that's where the air conditioning switches have been moved to. Of course, we also have the analog pressurization controller in the Ultra. One of the benefits to the pressurization controller in the Ultra is that it uses strictly pneumatic inputs. There's no electrical inputs to this system at all. So even in the event of a complete electrical failure, the system will still function 100% normally. Also in an Ultra, notice on the pressurization source selector, there's a ground position. The ground valve is used in the Ultra to allow three times the mass of airflow into the cabin and uh, it's uh, only used on the ground. So it's uh, connected to the right-hand engine, and when we select that, uh, it uh, would be used if you're flying on a, on a really hot day or a really cold day and the cabin is in an, at an extreme temperature, and you wanna allow more airflow into the cabin uh, when idling on the ground. The reason that the Ultra uses this is because the older, smaller JT-15D engines um, don't produce the same quantity of bleed air at idle in particular that the uh, Encore's Pratt & Whitney 535A engines are able to produce. So uh, when idling on the ground for a long time, the cabin could uh, be uh, warmed up or cooled down more effectively using the ground valve. I talk about this detail in my Emer bus videos but just to reiterate it here, the Emer bus includes a couple of extra items in the Encore. Notably, the hydraulic bypass valve is powered, as well as the gear control and the flap control valves on the hydraulic system. So 
when I turn the Emer bus on, notice that the gear indicator lights turn on because you can use the landing gear normally on the Emer bus, as well as the wing flaps in an Encore. Those are not accessible in an Ultra. The parking brake and the tow brakes on the Citation Encore are the same as the Ultra, except that on the internal construction of the system, the Encore relies on a brake metering valve to apply the brakes, which requires normal DC power to operate. So if you do not have normal DC power, the brake system is completely useless. It's ineffective. Uh, you won't be able to apply the brakes. So whenever we set the parking brake in an Encore, we must turn the battery master on to get normal DC power uh, to use the uh, brake metering valve and set the parking brake. The same would apply in flight if we just want to use the uh, brakes on landing. We have to have normal DC power in an Encore. The Citation Encore also has a battery disconnect switch in the far left lower corner of the instrument panel. This is used for if you have a uh, problem where the, the start sequence on the engines uh, does not um, terminate the way it should and the starter disengage button does not work. Um, the only solution is to disconnect the battery and in an Ultra you would have to physically climb out with the engine running and uh, open up the tail cone and disconnect the battery uh, with the engine running right above your head potentially. Um, whereas here we have a battery disconnect switch that we can uh, disable the battery from the cockpit if necessary. In an Ultra, this little corner of the panel is vacant. The fuel boost pump switches in an Encore are identical to an Ultra in that they are a three position switch. It's, it's labeled on, off, and norm. However, the uh, function of the different positions is slightly different. So on is on, just like an Ultra. Um, norm is a uh, run for the three conditions of engine start, cross feed, and low fuel pressure detected. However, off in an Encore is truly off. It will not run under any circumstance. So if we position the switches to off, the engine will not start because uh, you need the fuel boost pumps running to start. Um, so it won't run in off no matter what. Whereas in the Ultra, the fuel boost pump switches will actually run in the off position for engine start as well as cross feed. The only time they don't run in the off position is when low fuel pressure is sensed. Ice protection is considerably different on the Encore compared to the Ultra. In the Encore, it uses a hot wing design. It uses bleed air from the engines to heat up the entire leading edge of the main wing. Uh, that's as opposed to boots on the Ultra. And because of that change, we have a set of switches labeled wing and engine on, or you can have it off, or you can have only the engine ice protection turned on. So you'd use the engine only ice protection uh, when taxiing on the ground, wing and engine for in-flight. And then tail auto is used uh, because you still have a pneumatic boot that offers protection for the horizontal stabilizer. And the uh, switch can be placed up into the auto position and it will cycle the boots on the tail every three minutes. It uh, blows the uh, left side of the horizontal stab first for six seconds, uh, sucks the uh, boot down for six seconds, blows the right side for six seconds, and then sucks it down and repeats that cycle every three minutes. And uh, if you press and hold the switch down into the manual position, it inflates all of the boots simultaneously uh, until you release it from the manual position. The wing cross flow switch in the Encore is used in the event of an engine failure to provide ice protection to the wing on the inoperative engine's side. So for example, if you have a left engine failure on the pilot side, the number one engine, uh, you could leave the ice protection turned on on the right side, turn the wing cross flow switch to on, and uh, it would take bleed air from the right engine and send it over to the left main wing in order to offer ice protection to both the left and the right wings 
even from just the right engine by itself. Ice protection in an Ultra relies on pneumatic boots for both the main wings and the tail. In an Ultra, the engines are protected still through bleed air. The way this works is uh, when the engine ice protection switches are lifted up from the off position to the on position on both the left hand and right hand sides, that will uh, use bleed air to heat the engine nacelles as well as the uh, stator vanes and uh, that is all the same as the Encore, but the uh, wing root on the main wing is also heated through bleed air. So it's only the inboard five feet or so that is uh, heated using bleed air. And that is all turned on through the engine ice protection switches. Now, in the event of uh, an engine failure operating on a single engine in icing conditions, the saying is to, quote, bury the dead. What that means is uh, if we were to have a left-hand engine failure, like the number one engine on the left side is shut down, we would bury the dead, so to speak, by taking the left-hand engine ice protection switch and shifting it down into cross feed, just like that just like this here. This is uh, essentially the same function as the wing cross flow uh, switch in the Encore where uh, ice protection from the right hand engine would flow across the airplane and be used to uh, heat just the inboard wings main wing route on the left hand side in this configuration. The surface auto switch is a little different than the uh, tail auto switch in the Encore. With the surface auto switch in the Ultra, it's a spring-loaded switch that when we push it up to the auto position and let it go, it springs back down. And that will run one cycle of inflating the boots on both the main wings and the tail. It'll inflate the lower portion of both main wings as well as the left side of the horizontal stab uh, for six seconds. It will suck those surfaces back down for six seconds. Then it will inflate the upper portion of the main wings on both sides as well as the right hand horizontal stab and then uh, suck those back down for six seconds. And then it, it won't do anything further until the pilot commands more. So it will not cycle the way uh, repeatedly cycle the way uh, the Encore cycles. The ignition switches in the Encore have two, well really three positions. They have norm, on, and secondary. Norm will uh, run anytime the engine ice protection is turned on. If you turn it to on, it will run the ignitions all the time. And secondary will also run the ignitions but from a secondary power source. So this was a change, my understanding is it was related to updated certification standards. I believe it might have even been in Europe uh, when the Encore was produced that required the ignitions to be uh, powered from two independent electrical systems. And uh, this was the solution that Cessna came up with as opposed to the Ultra that has simply norm and on. The ignition switches in an Ultra have only two positions, on and normal. There's no secondary position like the Encore. In the Ultra, there's also the ignition indicator lights located next to the switches. These little LEDs will light up when the ignitions are firing, or I should say when they're turned on and that there's power reaching the exciter boxes. So they are no guarantee that the actual uh, igniter plugs are firing, but they do indicate that power has reached the exciter box. So you'll see these when the ignition switches are turned on or when the engine ice protection is turned on, the ignitions automatically should uh, start firing at that point as well. These LED indicator lights have been relocated uh, in the Encore. So here in the Ultra, they're by the ignition switches but in an Encore, they have been relocated to the top of the ITT engine gauge. Right up here is where you would normally see them in an Encore. And uh, this makes it a little bit more useful during engine start. You can see the ignitions 
more easily, as well as uh, operating in a crew environment, the pilot monitoring or the co-pilot sitting in the right seat can see the uh, ignitions and the status of the ignition. The Encore is also equipped with an interior master switch as part of the electrical switch system. This is on the pilot side armrest and it would be used to cut electrical power to all electrical devices aft of the cockpit with the exception of a few things like the emergency lights, the exit lights, and uh, this is intended for use in case of uh, an electrical fire or um, an electrical short that you sense is uh, coming from something in the cabin and you just want to uh, isolate all the electrical items back there. You can flip this from norm to off, it's a guarded switch, and um, that will cut all the electricity to the cabin, uh, overhead reading lights and, and things like that. This switch does not exist in the Ultra. It's unique to the Encore. In an Ultra, here's what the pilot side armrest looks like. Notice that there's no interior master switch. The Encore has master warning as well as master caution switches. This is different from the Ultra, which has only a master warning switch. The Ultra uses a master warning, but not a master caution system. The enunciator panel is also more detailed on the Encore. It offers a higher level of detail into the systems than what you would find on the Ultra. I can't go into every single difference that you find here, but I'll pan down the, the uh, panel here slowly, and you'll notice that things like the aft J-Box enunciator, the nose avionics fan, the fire detection system lights, uh, various systems like that are monitored on the Encore that are not monitored in the Ultra. The Ultra Enunciator panel is somewhat simpler than the Encore Enunciator panel. I'll give you a shot here for a few seconds so you can just look it over and see some of the differences for yourself. There's really too many to talk about briefly in the video here. The Encore has these nifty little red ice detection lights. This uh, post has a red light in it that uh, when the panel lights are turned on, shines up on the windshield, has a kind of a gentle glow to the windshield. You have one on the pilot side as well as one on the co-pilot side. And uh, these are used to help pilots spot ice on the windshield uh, at night. And uh, they don't exist on an Ultra. Now coming out to the exterior of the Encore, down on the lower portion of the fuselage, just below the wing root, you see this little air scoop. There's a similar air scoop on the Ultra, but they're used for very different uh, tasks. This air scoop here is to bring air into the purge passageway behind the hot wing that has bleed air running through it, the length of the wing. And then uh, it's dumped out at an exit port that I will show you shortly. And the uh, Ultra uses uh, an inlet for the ram air shroud. Here's the air inlet for the Ram Air Shroud on a Citation Ultra. This draws in fresh air in flight, runs it through the Ram Air Shroud, and is used to regulate the temperature of bleed air coming into the, the uh, wing route on an Ultra for engine ice protection. Here's the inboard section of wing that's heated in an Ultra. This is heated in order to serve as an anti-ice protection. Ice never accumulates here because uh, it would not be good to have ice accumulate and then shed into the engine uh, the way a boot would shed ice. On the fuselage at the rear of the wing, next to the single point refueling door, there's an outlet. This air outlet is the outlet from the ram air shroud where air is drawn in at the inlet, passes through the shroud, and exits back here at the outlet just aft of the wing route. Here's the trailing link landing gear found on an Encore. An Ultra has a straight-legged gear. 
This also explains why the Encore carries less fuel than the Ultra. An Encore carries approximately 5,440 pounds of fuel. An Encore, uh, correction, uh, an Ultra carries about 5,800 pounds. So uh, about 350 pounds more in the Ultra compared to the Encore because the straight-legged gear takes up less space in the wing, whereas the trailing link gear, even though it offers a softer landing in the Encore, uh, reduces the total fuel capacity slightly. Here's the straight-legged landing gear used on an Ultra. Notice that it's a simpler mechanism, lighter weight, but it also results in uh, firmer landings. It's much uh, easier to get smooth landings in an Encore and uh, you'll usually feel a bit of a bump on landing in an Ultra. Here's the engine of an Encore. It's a bigger engine rated to 3,400 pounds of thrust per engine. It also has a, a pylon pre-cooler built into the pylon. This is something that you won't find on the Ultra. It's not necessary on the Ultra because the engine is smaller and produces less bleed air, as opposed to the Encore that is capable pr of producing more bleed air and therefore needs the pylon pre-cooler to regulate the temperature of the bleeder. Here's the engine on a Citation Ultra. Notice how it's noticeably smaller than the engines on an Encore. The Encore uses Pratt Whitney 535A engines and the Ultra uses JT15D engines. The JT15Ds are rated for 3,045 pounds of thrust per side. Notice that there is an inlet on the engine pylon. This is simply fresh air for the tail cone, and it's not a pylon pre-cooler the way you would find on an Encore. The Encore wing is a hot wing. It has a heated leading edge. The entire length of the wing, or virtually the entire length of the wing, it uh, comes all the way out to the last section here with the uh, landing light. As soon as it switches to the landing light, it's no longer heated on the uh, last two feet or so, but the uh, rest of the inboard section is heated. The Encore, because of the higher gross weight, also requires 16 boundary layer energizers on the leading edge of the wing. These uh, improve the um, flying performance at high angles of attack and uh, it's required to have 16 for flight. You won't find these on the Ultra because it's a booted wing and the uh, aircraft has a lower maximum gross takeoff weight. Here's the vent where the air comes out of the purge passageway. This does not exist on the Ultra because there is no heated leading edge that requires a purge passageway. Here's booted wing that you'll find on a Citation Ultra. The boot extends out close to the wingtip, a little bit closer to the wingtip than the ice protection on, a, on an Encore. And as you look down underneath the wing, you'll see that there is no vent for a purge passageway because the purge passageway doesn't exist in an Ultra. It's not needed. A quick note about fuel in the Encore. You can use uh, fuel without prist, so that would be Jet A negative is usable in the Encore. In the Ultra, you need to have Jet A positive, that's with prist. Checking the oil is a really easy process on an Encore. We have a sight gauge here rather than a dipstick. There's also a chip detector to determine if there's any metal shavings in the oil. And uh, this is not located on an Ultra. The Ultra is not equipped with a chip detector. But the chip detector on the Encore is connected to the hot battery bus. And in order to run this test, we can press the switch towards lamp test to make sure that the bulb is not burned out or has an issue. And then we can go up to the chip test. And by seeing the absence of a light, that proves that there's no metal shavings in the oil. Checking the oil on an Ultra requires using a dipstick and there is no chip detector available. This oil should be checked as close to shutdown as possible when the engine is still warm in order to get an accurate reading. 
looking underneath the engine pylon, you can see the exhaust port for the pylon pre-cooler. This exhaust port is uh, what's used to dump out warm air uh, in order to regulate the temperature of the bleed air coming into the aircraft. There are no vents under the pylon of an Ultra because it doesn't use a pylon pre-cooler for the bleed air. It might be a little bit difficult to see it in this video, but the Encore landing gear is about four feet narrower than the Ultra. The Encore landing gear is about 13 feet wide and the Ultra landing gear is about 17 feet wide. The Ultra landing gear is wide enough that you can view it from the cockpit, which is a benefit when you're turning around in a very uh, tight spot, uh, a tight taxiway or a, a narrow runway. Uh, you can look out the window and physically see where the main landing gear is located, whereas the Encore, uh, the geometry is such that you simply cannot see it from the cockpit. The Ultra's landing gear is about 17 feet wide, noticeably wider than the Encore's, and you can physically see the gear from the cockpit as long as you put your head right up against the side window. Here's a view of the landing gear out the co-pilot side window while we're parked. The Encore has an oxygen bottle the same as an Ultra. The difference with the Encore is that the bottle is physically located in the tail of the aircraft. And we have the oxygen high pressure relief port right here in the tail. This is opposed to the on, or the uh, Ultra that has the oxygen bottle and the relief port in the nose of the aircraft. The Ultra's oxygen bottle is located in the nose with a high pressure relief port just above the main landing gear. The last uh, little issue I'd like to talk about with the Encore versus the Ultra is how the gross weight is higher on an Encore but the airframe weighs a little bit more. So the uh, gross weight on an Encore, you can take off uh, as heavy as 16,630 pounds, uh, whereas the Ultra can only take off at uh, 16,300 pounds. So you have a, a little over 300 pounds higher gross takeoff weight in the Encore. Um, but you also have a heavier airframe typically because of the bigger engines and the trailing link landing gear and a few changes like that. The Encores typically weigh about 500 pounds more than the Ultras when they're empty. So uh, you lose roughly 200 pounds on most Encores compared to Ultras as far as uh, useful payload. But uh, it's a, a fairly minor difference when you start looking at the added speed of the Encore, the ability to climb to a higher altitude sooner, and uh, therefore burn less fuel per trip. Um, it, it really uh, it becomes a very minor difference in the whole scheme of operations. And uh, typically speaking, almost whatever you can do in a, whatever trip you can fly in an Encore, you could fly in an Ultra and vice versa.